Hi, John with eTrailer. Hey, today we're taking a look at the Red Arc Tow Pro Liberty electronic brake controller, and this is on our 2016 Chevrolet Express van. Okay, so you need a brake controller because you have a trailer with brakes. Well, take a look at this unit. I really like these new units. This is it, right here. That's it. Gone are the days of some large control box that's usually right here and you're hitting your knees on it, you're constantly knocking it off and everything else. This Red Arc is just, this is the next generation of brake controllers. Uh, super easy to use, it's out of the way, uh, it leaves you complete, looks custom, um, you know, with a factory appearance, if you can believe that. As far as user interface, um, I like this dial. It's, uh, it's just easy. Uh, you have your increments of braking power all the way from zero, which is no braking power, all the way to 10. Um, this unit is proportional as well. So uh, basically, if you lightly apply the brakes, it's gonna lightly apply the brakes uh, in sequence on your trailer when you're coming to a stop here. Um, it's also, the act of calibration is something I really like. You don't have to sit here and do a bunch of different things. You basically just get in your van and drive and it learns which direction it needs to go. So another thing that I like is you have the knob that's a low profile up on the dash. Well, it's controlled by a module. And now the module uh, is really handy to install. It can be mounted in any orientation at all, the sideways, upside down, left, right, hanging, anything like that, as long as it's secure. You don't want to mount it to anything uh, that's, that can flop around or like cables, something like that. Now, if your van's already equipped to tow, you can buy the Tow Pro Liberty just by itself and install it and it'll work great for you. Or in this instance, like our van here, we didn't have anything. We had a trailer hitch, but we didn't have any factory wiring or at all. So we installed four-way flat. Uh, we have that available here at eTrailer if you need to do that. And building off of that is our kit. It's a seven-way kit. It'll allow you to still have your four-way flat if you have different types of trailers or if you need a seven-way. And then we wire that in and installed the Topro Liberty. If you want to see what it takes to get this installed, if you're interested in it and want to install it yourself, stick around. We'll walk you through step by step. Now to begin our install, there's a, a couple of things we need to go over. You can't have a brake controller if you don't have the seven-way plug. And you can't have the seven-way plug if your van was never wired for uh, a tow package to begin with. Now with our e-trailer brake controller kit, you're going to have the included seven-way connector here. You're gonna have um, the, the mount for it. In this case, we just went ahead and drilled it directly into the bumper with uh, two sheet metal screws that were provided in the kit. And on the back side of this, you're gonna see a number of, of fittings uh, and, and, and electric lines that we're gonna be tying into. Now, one of these connectors is going to be the four pole flat. Uh, since we're using the the one that we installed on the backside, that's a good thing to know that you're not gonna lose uh, four-way capability here. We'll just run this up and over, and it has slots here, and it's gonna just mount up in the side just like that. So you're gonna have, in the end, seven-way and four-way capabilities all in one unit. Now we'll take the four-way flat from the van, and we'll run this over the bumper, or over the hitch, and we'll connect that up to the back of our brake controller. And these two will simply just connect together. You can link these up. And if you'd like, you can cut these tabs off here. These, we won't be needing those. And you can either uh, run electrical tape and zip ties uh, to secure this up nice and tight or run this zip ties this way so they stay uh, connected. Now the remaining leads we have, we're gonna have the white is gonna be your ground. The black is going to be your 12 volt battery. Uh, the blue is going to be your brake um, circuit. And then this yellow wire here um, is for reverse lights um, on your trailer or if you have a lockout feature on your boat trailer. Now, this could be purple in your kit. This used to be purple, it is now yellow. We are not using this in today's application. We're just going to go ahead and tape that back. Now, included in the kit is 25 feet of 10 gauge cable. This we are going to be hooking up uh, to the power hot lead and then the, the, the brake circuit here. So um, the wire inside of this is going to be white and black. So in what we're going to do is connect black to black and then we'll connect white to blue. Even though we already have butt connectors 
on uh, our kit, we are going to upgrade to heat shrink butt connectors. We have these available here at eTrailer, especially since this is going to live outside under your van. I really recommend these. They're a little bit better quality than these, and it'll keep the corrosion down on your wires. And like I said, just to keep this easy for me, I'll keep black the same. I'll keep that the common color here. And then once we get to the front, we'll just mark the white wire so that we know that that's going to be our brake signal wire. So if we come under the van here, um, we're going to have our ground wire. And as you can see, we've got a lot of corrosion and rust. I'm going to use a Dremel tool with a uh, sanding drum on it. And we can place this up around here. There's really no good location for, for a ground that we need. So somewhere around right here, I'm going to clean the frame off, and I'll use a supplied self-tapping screw to get our ground right here. Okay. When that's good and tight, Go ahead and spray that with any color paint you got just to keep the corrosion down. Now with all of our connections made back here um, in the rear of the vehicle, I'm going to run this um, to the front, just going to kind of go uh, through the frame, uh, avoiding anything that's moving hot or sharp. Uh, well, I'll do that now and then I'll show you the way that I routed it. Um, and during that time as well, um, you can take this opportunity to zip tie any loose wires up back here. All right, let me show you how I ran this. If you come under here, We've got um, the harness zip tied right onto the uh, hitch, and it just went almost straight up. And we also tightened up this bundle of wires here, but we almost went straight up because we got the spare tire here. But you got to remember, sometimes you need to lower that and raise that. So you wanted to go, I went up and over the frame. And again, stayed up high. This unit has uh, rear heating and air conditioning, so I kind of followed the HVAC lines right here. It came up and over. Um, something you do want to watch out for. This is the parking brake cables, so this will move. That's why I stayed up high. And ran it on this side. Even though our battery is on the passenger side, um, our exhaust runs on the passenger side too, and it gets awfully hot over there. We have plenty of cable, even with this long van, that we just went right here and up into the engine compartment on the driver's side here, and we'll still be able to reach all of our connection points under the hood. Now we pulled the wire up through the engine bay here, and I just kept it kind of close to the firewall. Um, and you can see we still have plenty of, plenty of wire left. So next step here is gonna be stripping this back so we can separate the two wires. Okay, so we'll have the two wires here, the black we're going to run to our breakers, our 40 amp breaker that we installed. We already had two studs um, on the firewall here. I just utilized them. Why not? It's a good spot for the breakers. We have a 40 amp breaker um, that's going to be running the, the hot lead going all the way to the back. And then depending on what type of trailer you're towing, uh, in the kit we have a 20 amp and a 30 amp breaker. Basically, um, the 30 amp breaker is only used for trailers that have triple axles. Otherwise, you'll use the lesser unit. So we installed this here. In any event, the black lead goes to the 40 on one side. And on the other side, we're going to run that down to the battery hot lead. Just so you know, I took this off real quick just so you can see because uh, there's two different colors. You have copper and then a zinc color. The copper color is going to be the battery, uh, and then the, the zinc side is going to be the auxiliary. So just so you know that whenever you're coming off the battery um, to power this, it goes to the copper side. All right, so let's take a look at this. We've got our two wires here. This one we're going to run up to our breaker. This one we're going to run inside. So um, I'll just get a length of wire here, let's see about where we need it. Just 
strip that back. And the ring terminal is included with the kit. Let's route this back here. And since this is going to the back of the car and not to the battery, we're going to mount this on the silver terminal. Snug this up. Either 3 8 or 10 millimeter will work to snug that up. Don't over torque it. Now, when we made that cut and that connection, it leaves us approximately about six feet um, of this black wire. And we're going to be using this uh, to make our battery connection and the other connections as well. So, uh, for right now, we'll set this off to the side and we'll turn our attention to the white wire. And remember, this is really just blue. Um, uh, when we connected it back there. So this needs to go through the firewall and over here on the other side um, of the brake fluid here, we've got a rubber grommet and you can kind of see it. So we're going to push through this rubber grommet and that's going to put us on the inside uh, foot well of the driver's side um, compartment here. Now we need to run that through because we need to know how much white wire we need to cut that because again, we'll be using the excess wire for future connections. I ran a piece of nylon tubing up through the compartment. You can just use a uh, coat hanger or something you have at home. And I taped our white wire to it and I have it going down through the grommet. I'm gonna go inside and pull the wire and you can watch that come through. And real quick, I just wanted to show you in the footwell uh, on the driver's side here, this is where you're going to find that grommet. Um, it's just to the left of the brake pedal. It's a big, you have a huge um, wire loom coming through there. And I just made a small incision and we're going to pull our wire through. Now using that same technique, go ahead and uh, run three more lines in. Uh, the black line was the extra that we had left over. Now, the other line, um, if you have some wire hanging out at the house, if it's 16 gauge, that's great. Otherwise, we have some available here at eTrailer. Um, and we needed to add this. Uh, the white wire here is going to go over to our battery ground. And the red wire here um, is going to be tapping in for our brake circuit, the sense circuit on that. Now, we also used a fuse tap. Um, these are available here at eTrailer. Save yourself some time, especially on these express fans, and just get one of these instead of trying to splice in and find uh, the cold side of the brake sensor on this van. It's just way easier to be able to tap in to the fuse panel down here, and it's the number 68. Um, this guy right here, this 15 amp right here, one, two, and three. We'll do, we're going to tap into that, and that's going to uh, activate our brake controller for us much, much easier. So we'll take the black wire from inside the cab and use the ring terminal from our kit. And this is our 20 amp breaker. Since this is going inside and not to the battery, it's going to go on the silver stud here. Now we took the white wire that was coming from inside the cab and I ran it along this firewall. I'm going to end up um, just running it with this wire loom. Since it's white, I'll run it on the back side and, and use some zip ties and electrical tape so we don't see it. Anyway, our, uh, this is going to our battery ground. Um, on these express fans, you can come over here and look on the side of the battery on the fender well. You're going to see a, a strap here that goes directly to the battery. Um, and that's where we're going to go because messing with those side post terminals and trying to hook anything to those is a real pain. Um, this is as good as uh, connecting directly to the battery. It's in with the harness. Now we're going to pull that 15 amp fuse that's down here in the number 68 slot. We'll pull that up and we'll replace it with our fuse tap. Now we'll leave the fuses out right now um, since the wire is bare on the other side. 
and once we're all done with the install, we can replace it with fuses. Now, as far as the knob uh, for the controller goes, you can really mount it anywhere in here. We actually have a blank panel uh, on our dash already, and this is one of my favorite places to put stuff. We have extra blank panels because it's already going to be set up for you. It's going to be easy to get to and everything else. So you can either reach your hand up in there and push back, or you can get a pick tool just to pop that out. And you can see my hands right here. It's going to be super easy to wire up, and then we can take this outside and drill the holes that we need to mount the knob. So we took the blank panel out of the, uh, the Chevy here, and um, there's two holes that you have to drill. It's outlined um, in the instruction manual, and you'll start with a smaller hole up on top, and then the main hole that this, um, that this knob will come through. You can see the side panel here. Um, and then the only thing you have to do is tighten down uh, this nut, and that secures everything onto it. Uh, you're, re you're drilling two holes because it'll keep the, uh, the switch itself notched and, it, and the switch is not able to turn since it's a rotating knob. So the only thing you have to do is you'll notice some numbers on the knob itself and you just line it up. It'll count down all the way. Counterclockwise will be zero. You just line that up and before you push it all the way on, make sure just like that, the tens at the notch. So we're good. Push that on and we can continue our installation. Now we're back inside over here on the driver's side. I've got the wires, the four wires that are coming in from under the engine compartment. Uh, since we had multiple colors of wires, of white wires coming in, uh, we took some blue painter's tape because remember, this is the blue wire um, that's going back to our connector at the back. We're gonna be splicing this in to our pigtail for our Red Arc unit. Um, this unit is, it's important to note that this unit can be mounted in any position um, just as long as it's solid. You can't have it uh, going to wires or don't have it where it's just a little loose and it can shake. This is extremely sensitive. So um, we're going to have more than enough room to mount this up here solidly under here. And then this is the wire that's going to run from our unit there over to the control knob that we're installing on the dash. These butt connectors are supplied in the kit. We're gonna get all of these on this right now. Match up the colors from the wires coming from the engine compartment to our pigtail. So we have them all connected. We'll bundle them up with uh, some electrical tape and uh, we're going to find a spot to mount our Red Arc unit. So right above our brake pedal here, we have a uh, control module that is able to come out. Now you don't want to screw into this, but I did notice that it has a couple of tabs on the outside that doesn't affect it at all. And so I took our unit and drilled a hole and used a uh, short bolt with a lock washer on the back to secure it up here. It's plenty, plenty enough to keep that thing secure. Um, and then I ran our connector wire up and over. So we'll be able to hook that in. So the only other connector we're gonna need is on the other side. Uh, and that's gonna run up to the knob on our dash. So the one end of the cable um, I'll show you. One end has a 90 degree on it, uh, and that's going to go to our knob here, and the other end of the cable goes into the red arc, and that's straight. And like I said before, you can, there's plenty of room under here. Um, so you just, I just routed this cable underneath here, and I'll plug it into the red arc unit, and then this side just gets plugged in, and that snaps back in. So the cord. Um, the tab will be on the front side when you go to plug this in. It plugs in just like the Ethernet cables for internet. And that's clicked in. So just go ahead and use any zip ties uh, to secure the wires that you need. 
Now, as far as the inside of the cab here, all the wiring and all of the work is done. So um, the kit has zip ties with it. So go ahead and uh, secure any loose wires and make it pretty. We'll head back under the hood. Now, something I want to mention, uh, especially with this van, the kit, because uh, we're going to have to build two jumper wires for the battery that go up to our breakers. Um, there's enough wire here for both of those, um, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to use, uh, we're going to get rid of the white wire just because it's going to be confusing. We're going to use two black wires for this. So I made two jumper wires, uh, just about two feet long or so. Um, now these are both going to be hot wires, like battery, 12 volt positive, and we're going to go to our copper studs on our breakers. Now, as, instead of going to the battery, we're coming down to our fuse panel here on this side. Uh, this goes directly to the battery. That is a battery cable right here. Um, so it's gonna be really convenient for us. On this side, of course, it's feeding the rest of the vehicle. So we don't wanna interfere with the amperage rating or anything. So we're gonna to go to the battery side and hook up down there. First, we're gonna start with the breaker though. These are hooked up. We'll route these around on the back side and then down to the tap in our fuse block. Then we can take our fuse tap here and we'll put both fuses in. It takes two fuses because this fuse here is going to power the original circuit and the other fuse is going to power our new circuit up here. Now we'll plug this in and uh, more than likely we're going to have to either notch this box or cut a notch down in that plate to fit the, uh, the wire through here. So something like that you can do. Get that in. And it stalls just like a fuse. Just slide it in there. And then we'll see about um, how we can run this wire through. Now we're inside the van right now. This is going to be the first time that we turned it on. I just want you to see um, that when you go to start it for the first time, you're going to see some colors. Uh, this is going to be the active calibration right now. It's going to flash blue and green. Basically, all they want you to do is just drive around normal. And um, the Red Arc unit is going to learn basically the, the direction of travel and the, the brake force that it needs to apply while you do that. So just drive around normal. When it's a solid blue is when it's calibrated. So we're just driving around right now while it's calibrating and this is probably the easiest part of the install. So once it's solid blue, we did about, I don't know, 15, uh, or, 15 or so brake applications. We just in the parking lot here, we just accelerated and stopped in a straight line. And when we apply the brakes, you'll see a red light um, and uh, it'll flash from blue to green, and then the more that it's confident, the more than it learns, uh, it'll eventually go solid blue, which is what it did for us. So that wasn't really too bad uh, for it to be auto calibrated. And that was a look at the Red Arc Tow Pro Liberty electronic brake controller on our 2016 Chevrolet Express van.